Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Technique Tuesday. Today we are going to talk about spray paint or rattle can or graffiti maker or whatever you want to call it. Now, there are so many different brands and types of spray paint out there now. I mean, it's absolutely amazing what you can find. So, we're going to talk about spray paint and also about um, a second technique where we're going to add some gold on top of some of these items. So what I've got, obviously the gold. This is the package it comes in. It is water-based. Uh, pretty sure I got it at Hobby Lobby. That's uh, the closest to me. Then I've got a variety of spray paints. Got a just a regular paintbrush. Some pointed Q-tips. I like these better than regular Q-tips if you can find them. A little bit of water for cleanup and something to burnish tape and some painter's tape. So let's start off with the spray paint. So this one right here, don't forget these are all supersized designs just so you can see what's going on. This is just a regular high gloss white. Nothing special about it. This one I could have done a second coat once the first coat was dry if I wanted just a solid coverage of it, but I kind of like a little bit of the the wood showing through in the background. Now I also taped this off halfway down so that I can do one technique on the top and another on the bottom. If you are going to spray paint the bottom though, make sure the top is totally dry, tape off the top, then do the bottom later. Now it's easier for a dark color to cover up a light color than it is a light color to cover up a dark. So that's why I tend to do my whites first. And then if I wanted to come back and do say red later, the red will cover up if there's any uh, overspray from the white, but the white would struggle to cover up the, the red. So this is my white. Next, I have this chalk country gray. Then I have a red. This one without the gold on it is a satin. It's called Azure Blue and really, really pretty deep colors and it's fast drying. This one's a satin as well. Then I have this uh, satin French Blue. They don't have to be satin. They can be glossy. It, this is just what I picked for today. Then I have some metallics. So that's why this is so pretty just by itself. I hope you guys can see that. So that's one metallic. Then this is another. This is an aged copper. Then I have these two cute little cans. Uh, these Hobby Lobby. They are very expensive for the size that they are, but they're handy. That way they don't dry up as fast because you use them faster. And uh, when we had the spray paint shortage of 2021, this was kind of all I could get a hold of. But this is a blue. And this is, what did they call this one? Caribbean green. So the shapes that I have, some of these are mix and match. So these stand alone and then these are mix and match. So you've got your tops and your bottoms, but you don't have to uh, stay with the same color combination. You could do this, you could do that. You can, oops, let me scoot that back where you can see it. So there's no rule that says you have to match your top and bottom colors. You can have fun with it. So there's a lot of different combinations there. And that's just from a moment of playing. Okay, so let's talk about the ones that I taped off. So I did just take painter's tape and just tape this off. I tend to tape this bottom. Let me undo this so you can see what I'm talking about. See how this top layer of tape overlaps the bottom layer? I tend to do that so that paint doesn't get up underneath it or overspray. 
and I kind of drew an imaginary line across the middle of this. So these are dry now, so let me peel it back. and You can see that there's a nice straight line. So I could go back in, and like I said, I could flip it around. I could paint this now a red, and you're going to have a two-tone design. Now when you're laying down your painter's tape, you want to make sure that you seal the edge. And what I mean by that is don't just lay it down and kind of push it. Take something like a bone folder or a, it just something with a little bit of pressure. And you want to push right on that seam. If you've ever tried to paint stripes on your home wall, you'll know the magic of having a little pressure on it. It stops the paint from bleeding up underneath it. The other way is just completely paint it all one color then put your dividing line, then paint this a different color. And it creates a barrier from that paint bleeding. So here's my white one. And I did use my little trick when I was spray painting these of hooking them on a paper clip. Paper clips in my house are not normal shapes. They've all been bent out of shape. <laughs> Imagine that. So that's what I used to hold on to. Now when you're shaking your cans, you'll hear that rattle, hence rattle cans. You want to hear that rattle and keep shaking. Shaking them up and getting a good mixture really matters on your colors. Now when you're spray painting outdoors, no if ands, or buts, do not spray paint in your house. You will hate life. So outdoors on a nice not overly cold, not overly hot day, or go up under the shade. Let them dry fully. When you're spraying, short strokes and just hit the piece of wood with a short stroke of paint. You don't want to hold it too close and just keep spraying. You want just kind of this distance and short bursts. So let's take this gray off. So Again, we can see. Now, this one, I've already started to put the gold onto, so that's what you're seeing. So I'll come back to that one. This one I hadn't done anything, and these I hadn't started doing. Oh, I take that back. I did start painting the edges of this gold. I just thought it was a cool effect. So let's shuffle some of these out of the way. These two, I could also go in and take, say, like an acrylic paint or watercolors or finger paint or any of the techniques we've done before, and I could paint this bottom half something different if I wanted to. I could even stain them. And don't forget, you can use those stain markers. If you, if you, have, if you can find those, those furniture stain markers. But again, you want to make sure that you've got a line here that stops any of that stain from coming across the line. Also, go with the grain. Now, when you're wanting to section off an area, you can just cut off a piece of painter's tape, make it just a little, little piece, and create a line. Or, I found this really cool stuff. It's pinstriping tape. And it comes in different widths. And I'll do a whole nother tutorial on pinstriping and how we can use this tape. But it's just super thin and allows you to block off different areas. But here I just used that. So this gold that I keep talking about, it's this treasure gold. And it does clean up with water. You the instructions say to use long, smooth strokes and then finish by making one lengthwise brush stroke to smooth it out. Then you want to let it dry completely between your first and second coat. You can sand it between those coats if you want to, but make sure you wipe it off with like a tack cloth before you put that second layer on it. And then just clean up your paintbrush with soap and water. Now. I wanted my designs to have a raggedy gold look to them, so I didn't want smooth brush strokes. So I'm going to shake, always shake, always make sure the lid's on tight, 
and I'm going to use this and for my design I'd like it to look like oh look at that pretty color I'd like it to look like the gold is kind of dripping from here to this other section and this is where I can also use my uh, cuticle stick, orange wood, whatever they want to call it. Get a hundred of them at Sally's Beauty Supply. That's the best place to find them. Cheapest place. And this creates very ragged dots, which is exactly what I want. If you want it smooth, paint it smooth. If you want it ragged, make it ragged. So let's just take some of this paint and I'm going to literally just kind of glob it on there. Anybody that wants this to be smooth and even, that is completely your choice. I just want it chunky and raggedy. So I'm just dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it, smushing it, whatever word you want to use right here on the edge. Now let me show you what it looks like when I use the uh, cuticle stick. It just kind of gives a little more texture. Can you hear me just tapping away? It sounds like a woodpecker. Now I want this pattern to match up to the top piece. Ooh. Also, I want to finish, I didn't finish this, painting the in-between. Okay, I'm going to let that, ah! Okay, let that dry. And then for the top, again, I just want it to look nice and random. Don't forget these are oversized, so you won't use near as much paint as I do. Ooh, I like that. And when those two come together with some jump rings, that's what it's going to look like. You want to put gold down here? Put gold down here. You want to put it on the sides? That's awesome. Put it on the sides. And that's what I started doing on this one. I just started going around the edge and give it kind of that old world uh, Moroccan feel, even though it's a little bit more of a Aztec bohemian shape. I think the, the colors lend it to be a little Moroccan. Yeah, that could be a Moroccan shape, too. Okay. So, any of these shapes, you can add any type of color you want to it. In fact, let me grab another color. Okay, so I grabbed just a red acrylic. And let me move these out of my path of destruction here and let's take some tape because I don't want this red to bleed over into my gray so I'm going to lay it down on my dry gray spray paint and I'm going to burnish it down don't want that red getting up underneath it shake and there's no limit to how many colors you put on it. You can decide. You're, you're the limiting factor. So let's just take a little bit of this red. So remember, we're going to paint in the direction of the green, but we're also going to paint away from this dividing line because we don't want to push paint up underneath it. So let's start down here. Now when I get up here, I'm doing this a little backwards so you all can see. I'm going to paint, but 
not push. So lightly paint. Don't push it up underneath the tape. that dry. Clean my edges up a little bit. A little carried away there. Q-tips to the rescue. Okay. Now you don't have to put a thick coat on. You can always go back and do a second coat if you're not getting the coverage that you want. Two thinner coats are better than one thick coat. So I'm going to let this dry move that over here and move over to one of my other shapes. Ooh, you know what? Let's throw some red lines across my silver and across my finger. Why not? I needed some nail polish. So you can paint with acrylic paints on top of spray paint. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. You can smear it on there, you can paint it on there, you can rub it in there, you can finger paint it on there. No limits. If I wanted to paint stripes. I'm going to save my pin striping for another day so I can show you all that technique. I'm just going to take this, shake the whole table, and block off a section here. with the grain and don't smash it up underneath your tape. Turn it so I can get the direction I need. I think y'all get the idea there. You can do circles. If you grab some stickers, round circle stickers, or make a design with your Cricut, you can lay that on top of here. We'll have a whole nother tutorial on making stencils with your Cricut. So just wanted to give you guys some, some options with spray paint. And once these other ones are dry, I will peel them back and post the pictures in the comments. Please let me know if you have any questions. Bye, y'all.